Quantum Jumping 2, CD1, The Four Levels of Quantum Jumping. This is Bert Goldman speaking. I will be with you for this entire series. Module 1, The Little Known Secret of Quantum Energy. I was lecturing before a group of people in New York. Everything is energy, I said, in one form or another. We were at the Gramercy Park Hotel Ballroom. Someone had just asked about the fact that you couldn't see energy. But you can, I said. Everyone has a field of energy that surrounds them. That energy is called different things by different people in different cultures. But here in the United States, we simply call it the energy field. You may also have heard of it referred to as an aura or an auric field. Saying that, I proceeded proceeded to show people how to see an aura, and I put mine on display. Here's how I did it. I like to demonstrate this energy that surrounds each person. First of all, I stand in front of a bare wall, and I have all the students stare at the center of my forehead, while at the same time, they should be aware of the outline of my head and shoulder area. So they're looking in the center of my forehead. Some of them look at the tip of my nose. doesn't really matter. But they, they, what does matter is they should be aware of the outline of my head and shoulder area because uh, at first viewing, the aura is best seen from your peripheral sight. While they're staring, I kind of squeeze very slightly on the physical level, but quite strong mentally. I imagine a fog-like light oozing out of my body from my stomach area to the top of my head. My eyes are closed when I'm doing this, and I hold the squeeze until I hear something. What I usually hear is, Oh my God, I see it, said one person. I see it, and then I see it rings out from all over the room. It's like a shimmering of a highway on a hot day, says one person. And pretty soon they all see it my aura. Just about that time, energy, that unseen force, becomes a real thing, a real object. Wow! Comes from the throats of the participants there. But what use is it? Asks one of the participants. Let me show you one use, I say. Now, energy is everything. Not just the energy that causes you to get out of bed in the morning, or the energy that enables you to run a mile or work all day. But energy is the thing that causes cohesiveness and interconnection, keeping the cells of your body active. It's the thing that enables your mind to come up with creative ideas. And it's the thing that draws one person to another, or that draws things, people, and events to you. Energy is what determines the law of attraction. Energy is what creates your world. But it was time for me to demonstrate energy a bit further. And pretty soon I would show them how to use energy to heal, to create, to attract success. But first, I want to show how real this energy is and that anyone could create and manipulate it. I walked over to a young man in the front row and I whispered in his ear, imagine a wall somewhere in this room, a mental wall that you create going from ceiling to floor and wall to wall. Just think about it, but you do create it. I asked him if he understood and he nodded. Now, while he's mentally building the wall, I took a wire coat hanger out of my briefcase And with a pair of cutting pliers, I made two cuts so that now the coat hanger was in the shape of an L. I then told the group that the young man had created a wall of energy somewhere in the room and I would find it. Holding the coat hanger that was now a dowsing rod in front of me, small end loose in my hand, long end straight forward, I slowly walked from one end of the room to the other. About three quarters of the way, the wire suddenly moved abruptly to the right. I looked at the young man and I said, the wall is right here. He smiled and then he laughed and he shook his head. That's right, he said. I can't believe it. 
I mentally put a wall right there on that exact spot. And then just about everyone in the group was asking the same question. How did I do it? Well, I wanted to give them a little background first so they could see that energy can be put to good use. I told them that everything was energy and that as everything is energy, it's all connected. At the quanta level, the very smallest of the smallest of levels, there is an intercommunication that takes place among all the levels of fundamental particles of matter consisting of neutrons and protons. But aside from that, uh, what you might think of as gobbledygook, that few people understand, let me say this. Let me put it a different way. If a person can build a mental wall that can be detected, then it is, to some extent, real. Now, building a wall with your mind might not be the most important item on your list of things to do today, but consider this. If you can build a wall with your mind, what else can you use that energy for? My friend Uri Geller taught me that, that particular technique. He uses that same energy to sprout seeds in his hand. He causes broken clocks and watches to work, and he bends spoon, spoons with his mind. He uses that same energy to do all that and more. I know that for a fact because Uri and I used to do seminars together. During one of those seminars, SONA, an acronym for Secrets of the New Age, Uri demonstrated using the quantum energies to sprout seeds in his hand and read people's thoughts, while I used it to heal all those who applied. We were a great team, but Uri changed direction and began to douse psychically for oil in Mexico uh, parts of the Middle East, and parts of the U.S. He found many sites for oil companies in the 80s and 90s and grew quite wealthy using these quantum energies. But what can you use it for? Well, when we utilize the energy of infinity that I call a w quantum energy, you discover that the universe is one big hologram. Now, why do I say that? And what is that? You, you, you've heard that word before, I know. And, and you probably think that a hologram is like a three-dimensional photograph. Well, my friend, it's much more than that. Let me explain. Say that on a piece of celluloid, you had your hologram. And the hologram was a picture of Napoleon, a three-dimensional hologram. All holograms are three-dimensional. Because it is a hologram, the entire picture of Napoleon is impressed on every molecule of the celluloid. So if you were to trim off one inch of the end of the celluloid, the entire picture would be there. If you were to trim off a tenth of an inch, the same picture would be there. Or if you were to have a three foot by three foot, which would be the original size, let us say, the entire picture would be there. At the quantum level, everything exists simultaneously because the hologram's particles are in communication with each other. There's no time on the quantum energy base level. This you prove mentally every time you think of a past thing or a future occurrence. The universe and all things it contains is just one vast hologram with all the information everywhere. But we don't call it a hologram except to explain it in terms that are easily understood. And so we call this vast hologram quantum energy. And when you put that together with quantum jumping, you get a resource of such value that you'll be utilizing its benefits all of your life. We accumulate a great base of knowledge over the years. Some of it is acted on while the rest is simply stored away somewhere in the recesses of the brain. This stored and buried material affects your everyday life, but as it is masked by overlapping data, it isn't noticed. And because it's not observed, it can't be acted upon. Most personal development organizations call this buried material past programming. Past programming 
or past programs are simply things that have happened or not happened in your past that have an effect on your attitude and your actions in the present. In the quantum world, these past programs are called source foundations. These foundations of future happenings are stored quantum energies. In the quantum world, each time a decision is made, each time a choice presents itself to you, there is a branching off of realities. You might say that a new energy is added to the hologram. Each time there is a decision to be made, a road opens in front of you that branches off in different directions. The branch of the road that you didn't take is also valid, as when the choice is made, another is set in place on the road you didn't take as well. Each branch, and there are many, create a new energy source. Maybe a little difficult to comprehend, but pretty much accepted as standard theory of many eminent quantum physicists today. With quantum jumping, we design each jump to get to one of those branches or sources of energy where you are successful in the, in the thing that you're looking to enhance, in the endeavor that you're looking to enhance. When you consider the branches that you make every day and extend that to a week and a month, you can see that by the, by the end of the year, your choices are practically infinite. With this module, we'll examine the branching concept, and by applying it to source foundations, you will discover all you need to know about past programming and how to correct it. Let me refresh your memory as to what a source foundation is, as the material that follows uses the source foundation premise as a basis for overcoming problems. In Quantum Jumping 1, you learned that a source foundation was an insignificant event that causes a significant effect. The example was that of a person, let's call him Harry, who's going to a New Year's party. The host wants Harry to contribute $20 towards the food and drinks. Harry is insulted as he feels if he's invited to a party, he shouldn't have to pay for it, and so he leaves. He goes to another New Year's Eve party, and while there meets Ethel, who ultimately becomes his wife. They have three children. One of them studies law, becomes a renowned attorney, and ultimately becomes the governor of the state. All those effects, the meeting of Harry and Ethel, their marriage, the three children, the governor, all are branches of the road that came into being because of a single source foundation, the $20 bill that Harry was asked to pay for that New Year's party. Had he paid it and gone to the first party, none of the other effects would have happened. But all were possibilities. That $20 created a quantum energy. Recall that quanta is the very smallest of particles. The $20 bill is an important factor in the life of Harry as it affects his future in every way. And even though it is a tiny energy source, it has significant consequences. In a quantum world, those effects, and many more, would and did take place. All those branches exist in a multidimensional holographic universe. In one of the branches, Harry went to the first party. In another, he went to the other party. Going further, at the second party, he didn't meet Ethel, he met Maria. In another branch, he went home without going to any party. And on and on, ad infinitum. Each decision he made led to a parallel universe, one of the infinity of universes where anything could be, could be imagined, anything that could be imagined taking place did take place. I realize that some of these ideas boggle the imagination. But just listen to this. The year, let us say, is 1960. Democrat Robert, R Democrat Ronald Reagan, rather, 
was a somewhat mediocre actor featured in B-movies, and Ronald Reagan was also on TV. If you were to say that one of his decisions would lead to the presidency of the United States as a Republican, you would have been thought of as crazy. And yet it was there. We all have somewhat bizarre branches of the road. The first step in controlling them is the knowledge that they exist at all. I don't know what Ronald Reagan's source foundation was or what the first decision that brought him on the path to the presidency was, but I would bet it was something as insignificant as him being late for dinner somewhere one day. Source foundations are the things that hold you back in life, that create poverty, poor relationships, self-sabotage, illness, stress, overweight conditions, addictive personalities, fears, early demise, and virtually all the negative conditions of life. Source Source foundations are also the things that create wealth, good relationships, success in all things, good health, a relaxed attitude, confidence, self-esteem, youth preservation, and all the positive conditions of life. Once a source foundation is set, it creates a quantum energy that influences attitudes and behavior. If you could identify a source foundation, you could change its outcome. If you knew how to set a source foundation, you could change your life. You would have control over your life and you'd be able to move in the direction that you choose, not the directionless way of the unknown. Every branch of the road, every decision that you make leads to a different you, a doppelganger, a self in an infinity of selves, in an infinity of occupations, with an infinity of personalities. But before I get into that, let me speak of the many yous there are right now, right here, in this universe, in this dimension. Within each one of us are many people, many different selves. We live in a world with many mansions, but most have not the slightest clue as to where they are or how to find them. You've probably noted yourself that at times you're happy, and there are times when you're sad. Sometimes you're serious, sometimes you're playful. I'm sure there have been times in your life when you were adventurous, just as there were times in your life when you were, you were an old stick in the mud and were quite happy with the status quo. Sometimes it's chemical. You see a beautiful or handsome member of the opposite sex and suddenly endorphins start firing off and you feel as though spring has sprung. Other times it's an attitude or something that you see or hear or smell that reminds you of a long-ago scene and a good or a bad feeling suddenly comes over you. Point being, it's sometimes difficult to find the real you, that hidden deep within you guy or gal who you really want to be, the real you. Where is that person? How can I find him or her? Well, my friend, you'll discover that you, the real you, that is, during this series of deepening quantum jumps, you'll get to know the real you. And you know something? That person is a champion in every way. That person looks to hit the ball out of the park with every swing. That's the person you'll find by the time we come to the last module of Quantum Jumping 2. During this continuation of the Quantum Jumping series, we'll be going deeper into the premise with mental conditioning exercises designed to not only take you on a trip to a parallel universe, but to jump into a self that will help you get through the day with energy, vigor, creativity, and a passion for the things you do. You'll start your day with a morning quantum jump to get those quantum energies flowing, to get the day started with a bang. And then... After you've gone through the day and made the thoughtful choices with the help of your wisdom jump into a parallel wherein dwells the wisest you of them all, you'll go for the evening jump to clean up all the mistakes, if any, of the day. Those things you said you wish you hadn't said, and those things you did you wish that you hadn't done. 
During the modules, as you listen and act on the information, you'll discover not only the real you, but you may well discover the you who suddenly discovers his or her life's purpose. Yes, you do have one. A life purpose that is, but you may not know it yet. Discover your life's purpose, and you may well prove to be a person you knew was deep within you, always trying to get out, and finally, you letting that person out. Discovering your life's purpose may well prove to be the highlight of your year. The target jump will get you to a place where the greatest goals and objectives of them all reside. Your target doppelganger self will help you to decide on not only the goals in your life, but the controls as well. In Module 3, the one after the meditation that follows this module, you'll learn about out-of-body experiences and how to use this resource to learn many things about yourself and others. And after that, you'll meet your past self and your future self. Get ready for major surprises with that module. We call that the self-reflection jump. You'll find that you can look back on your life thus far, and the glimpse that you will get will be an astounding resource in your life forevermore. The healing jump is one that everyone will find useful at one time or another in their lives, different from any other, and yet similar to many, because for this one, we go back to the person who really began the New Age philosophy. The man who coined the phrase, better and better, and who healed many thousands of people during his sojourn on earth. The man's name, Emile Coué. But Coué lived and practiced in the late 19th and early 20th century. Are his methods, you might ask, still applicable to our modern world? Well, you be the judge, especially as we have updated and utilized much new material in the healing jump even to using this powerful resource to help others. And then there's a reverse jump. In our infinite universe, there is a you, a doppelganger self, who wants to talk to you. You're the doppelganger in the reverse jump, and so during that jump, get ready to help your counterpart. You have information, and you have energies that your counterpart doesn't have, and you get lots of benefits after helping your twin self. The Midas jump will be quite interesting if you are still looking for that sometimes elusive money consciousness. Only one person can turn you into a money magnet, and that person is you yourself. You may have heard that if you give a person with a poverty consciousness a million dollars, a year later that person won't have any of it left. Whereas if you take a million dollars away from a person with, pro with prosperity consciousness, a year later they'll have it all back. Well, you know something? That's right. That's so. But what exactly is a poverty consciousness? Your Midas doppelganger knows. For him or her, making money is like taking candy from a baby. The Midas jump is designed for you to attract affluence and money instead of scarcity and hardship. It takes a bit of work on your part, but how hard did you work to get to where you are? The Midas quantum energy source is what creates that prosperity, consciousness. Quite possibly the one thing that affects everyone at one time or another, both on the physical and mental levels, are the cells that make up each individual. We see each cell on the quanta level as a tiny generating plant that charges and stimulates every organ of the body. With a cellular jump, this is taken into consideration. Our goal is that of recharging the cell for youthful exuberance and good health. If all that seems too ambitious, just buckle up and get ready because starting with the next module, you're going on the ride of your life and may you never be the same again. A positive ride. In the next modules, you'll learn our four levels of meditation, so find yourself a comfortable place where you'll be undisturbed for, oh, 10 minutes or so. Relax and allow yourself to get to that comfortable jumping off place 
that we call quantum meditation. You won't be in you won't be jumping into a parallel yet. Just getting your mind relaxed, your immune system strengthened, and you'll be letting all that stress in your life disappear. So just concentrate on my words and and occasionally the light musical background. Before each of the meditation levels, I will explain the exact method that we will be using to get there. There'll be a short introduction with a story or two about how other, other pe- how other people have used the meditation, and on the following module, that will then will come the meditation. But first, following this module, a description of the four levels of meditation. Module two, identifying the four levels of quantum jumping. Like any skill, quantum jumping should be honed and sharpened. As you get closer to mastering the material, you'll find that there are four basic levels to quantum jumping. First, there is the basic jumper. Then there's the novice jumper. Third, the master jumper. And the fourth stage is the quantum jumper. There is a fifth stage, that of master quantum jumper, but no one I know of has reached that particular state as yet. The master quantum jumper can hallucinate a scene, jump into it with fully, with, while fully aware and going about their regular business, act in their jump. Sort of doing two things at once, kind of like combing your hair and thinking about a mathematic solution or a lucid dream where you can control the events. You might say the master quantum jumper is everyone's eventual goal. Now, along with the four levels of jumping, there are also four levels of meditation. Meditation is the jumping off place, so to speak. And the deeper the relaxation, the more concentrative the meditator, the more successful the jump. Here are the distinctions to quantum jumping. One, the basic jumper. The basic jumper basically reads about and gets used to the idea that maybe there's something to this quantum jumping. The basic jumper thinks that it may be psychological or some exotic metaphysical technique that makes it work. But whatever it is, the basic jumper is going to try it a few times. The basic jumper uh, may not quite, quite get the picture as strongly as, let's say, the second distinction, the novice jumper. The novice jumper has done the meditation exercise at least three or four times, and has taken a simple jump into a twin self and has received vague information that leads the novice to believe that maybe there's something to this quantum jumping business. And then three, a master jumper starts the day with a jump into a parallel where a twin self has already completed the day and goes over the things that were done to make it a success. The master jumper uses jumping to set goals for the week the month, and the year. And four, the quantum jumper. The quantum jumper has experienced successes with creativity, success, relationships, and life in general. The quantum jumper uses jumping all the time. When a situation comes up, the quantum jumper will consider the the, the twin self in a similar circumstance and go over the situation considering all the consequences before making any decisions. I'm going to advise you to stick with basic jumping for a week or so. Do it at least seven times during that period. You may get a good result the first time. Many do, but don't be concerned if you don't. It's not unusual. It's primarily the way that you accept the premise of quantum jumping and how deeply you meditate. In the beginning, a light state of meditation will take you to the jumping off place. Then as you progress and go deeper, it gets easier. Just think. Think this, what if, what if, what if there were an infinity of universes and dimensions as many physicists believe, what if in one of those universes there was a duplicate you, a you exactly the same, except that you made different choices and you got to a different spot. I once did a class in the town of Kona on the big island of Hawaii. Bob Gilchrist was one of the participants. 
Bob told me that he'd been through Silva, went through a few trainings with Tony Robbins and a few others, but still hadn't found what he was looking for. Well, quantum jumping was new to him, and as he had been through the Robert Monroe seminar, he was familiar with out-of-body experiences, and he asked if that was the premise of quantum jumping. Well, Bob took to quantum jumping like the proverbial fish takes the water. He saw a connection between jumping and out-of-body experiences that he had experienced. Bob wanted to get right into being a quantum jumper. He felt he could skip over the basic novice and master jumper stages and get right to being a quantum jumper as he did out-of-body work for some time, and he had had many successes. Quantum jumping was perfect for him, as with the OBEs, the out-of-body experiences, he saw himself from he saw himself uh, from a kind of a fly on the wall perspective sitting on his couch he saw himself on the on the wall looking at his body many times he felt as though he were floating out and away from his body but there were no gains and no real gains for him there he couldn't use that there was no benefit there but now with quantum jumping he could actually get some benefit out of his OBEs, his out-of-body experiences. Deep into meditation he went. Lower brain waves took him to a deep alpha state. He was hoping for theta, but as he had no mechanism such as an EEG to measure his brain, his brain waves, he just assumed he was there. He reported seeing the door quite clearly as he went deeper into the relaxed meditative state, deeper than he'd ever been. Opening the door, he imagined himself just floating past the threshold into a parallel universe where his twin self was an inventor and had come up with a new method of getting energy from the currents of the ocean. It was apparently a series of veins similar to a windmill that was attached to a platform like those oil platforms in different parts of the oceans. The current Running steady turns the veins and generates electricity, which is stored in the platform and transferred to ships and then to cities. He imagined himself getting all this information, which was quite enterprising, because the success of this particular venture would literally change the world and the domination of the oil markets. Well, Bob is currently working on the idea. He's quit all other things to concentrate on this vision he got from his doppelganger. Now, not everyone gets anything quite so grandiose out of a jump, but even a jump that was reported by Millie uh, Lester can be exciting. Millie didn't know what she should prepare for dinner on Sunday for her family. Being a basic jumper, having only jumped once before, she thought she'd see what her counterpart had for dinner. And so she went to a twin self who'd already had Sunday dinner to see what she had prepared. Millie went to a light meditation and then through the door, not knowing what to expect, but she saw her twin self preparing for bed. She asked what she had had for dinner and thought she heard her twin self say a great salad with lettuce, olives, cherry tomatoes cut in half, anchovies, and basic, uh, basil, basil leaves. Well, Millie thought that wasn't exactly a mind-blowing experience, but it did give her an idea for dinner. Now she had a goal. And before you knew it, her family was sitting down to dinner that featured a large salad with anchovies, lettuce, basil, olives, and cherry tomatoes neatly sliced in half. To give the sa a salad a little more body, Millie put slices of seared tuna on top of it. She actually wrote me of her first success and asked, did all that really come from a twin self in a parallel universe? Or, she said, did I just daydream it? And my answer was, what's the difference? The idea is to get something that's helpful to you. And whether that information is earth-shattering or just a simple idea for a salad, it is information. Once you get used to the fact that you can get that information inspirationally, you get better and better information to help you make better choices and attract more and more positive experiences. On the next module is the basic meditation designed to take you to that hallway and door that we call the jumping off place to get to your twin self. So find a relaxed place where you'll be undisturbed for a few minutes and 
we will begin with the basic jump meditation. Module 3, the basic jump meditation. Find a relaxed place where you'll be undisturbed for 10 minutes or so, and we will begin. Make yourself comfortable, and of course, do not play this or any other meditation in a moving vehicle. Close your eyes. Take a deep breath. And while exhaling, mentally repeat and visualize the number three, three times. Take another deep breath. And while exhaling, mentally repeat and visualize the number two, three times. Take another deep breath, and while exhaling, mentally repeat and visualize the number one three times. You are now at a deeper, healthier level of mind. To reach a deeper, healthier level of mind at any time, just take an occasional deep breath. Relax. You are now at a deeper, healthier level of mind. You are now and always in complete control of your state of mind. You can open your eyes. You can be fully alert anytime you wish to be. Every time you enter this relaxed state, you know that you're getting better and better in every way. Whenever you enter this relaxed state, you'll mentally say every day and every way, I'm getting better and better. When you say these words, sense yourself improving in all areas of your life. Sense yourself getting better and better. Visualize improvements in your life now as you mentally repeat the words. Every day, in every way, I'm getting better and better. Relax. Relax your eyes. Relax your lips, your jaw. Relax your head, your neck. Relax your chest, your stomach, your back. Relax your body. Relax your arms and hands, your legs and feet. We're now completely Relaxed. Repeat mentally after me. Every day I am improving my image of myself, my self esteem. I am a unique human being. There's no one else on earth exactly like me. Every day I grow stronger in the realization that I can. I can think. I can create. I can do. Relax. This is being at a basic level of mind. This is basic meditation. Whenever you wish to relax and take a break from the stress of the outer world, recall what you feel at this moment. Recall how you feel at this moment, how relaxed, how at ease you are. Relax. Repeat mentally, my body rests and refreshes itself when I consciously relax. I'm relaxed now. My body is resting and refreshing itself, and I feel better and better. Visualize a small hallway with a door at one end. I'm going to count from one to three, and the count to three, the door will appear, and you will be in the hallway. One, two, three. You're in the hallway. A door has appeared. The door is closed. On the other side of that door are an infinity of places, of times, of events, and of selves of yours. On the other side of that door are parallel universes, 
anything that can be imagined is on the other side of that door. At this time, you will just imagine what could be on the other side of that door. Only good things, only positive things. On the other side of the door are uncountable numbers of universes, like sands on all the beaches on earth, grains of sands on all the beaches on earth, like molecules, like endless atoms blown up into universes by incredibly powerful forces. And also on the other side of that door are twin selves of yours who live, they live their own lives. They live out their own lives in their own dimensions on their own planets. Earths, just like our own Earth, but with differences. For now, just be aware that all that exists on the other side of the door. Relax. This meditation is simply to orient you and get you used to the fact that you can create a door that leads to interesting and helpful places. During the next meditation, you will go through the door, but for now it has been only an introduction. This is the basic step, first stage meditation. Whenever you wish to relax and take a break from the stress of the outer world, recall what you feel at this moment. Recall how you feel at this moment, how relaxed, how at ease you are. Repeat mentally, my body rests and refreshes itself when I consciously relax. I'm relaxed now. My body is resting and refreshing itself, and I feel better and better. In a moment, I'm going to count from one to three. At that moment, you will open your eyes. You'll be wide awake, feeling fine and in perfect health, feeling better than before. One, two, coming out slowly now. At the count of three, you'll open your eyes. You'll be wide awake, feeling fine and in perfect health, feeling better than before. Three, eyes open, wide awake, Feeling fine, feeling better than before. I recommend that you go to the basic stage of meditation, as, you, as you've just done, twice a day for 15 minutes each time if you have a health problem or if you work in a stressful environment. Five minutes a day of meditating is very good. 15 minutes is even better. To go to your first stage meditation once a day is good. Twice a day is very good. It's a wonderful feeling to be deeply relaxed. A very healthy state of being. Thank you. Quantum Jumping CD2, How to Jump Further, Module 4, Beyond the Basic Jump. Now that you've experienced the basic meditation, it's time for the next step. The steps are taken from basic meditation and jumper to the quantum level of jumping. By taking these steps one at a time, you'll find yourself more prepared for successful outcomes. Each of the meditations takes you deeper and closer to your goal. With a novice meditator, your concentration is fixed on a black velvet screen. You'll be imagining yourself next to a box filled with white plastic numbers, 10 of them. You'll visualize as best you can yourself taking the numbers in order from 10 to 1, placing them on the black velvet screen. First the number 10, then the number 9, and so on, until all the numbers are on the screen. This takes you to a deeper, a more concentrative level of mind where you'll be more successful in your jump to visit your twin self. During this jump, it's not important to get any earth-shattering information. Just imagine that your doppelganger, your twin self, is there to greet you. As there are an infinite number of universes, pick one where your twin self knows that you're coming and will greet you with respect. 
These modules are to lead you, step by step, to that area of mind where you'll be most successful in your quantum jumping. I like to tell the story of Stevie Wonder's backup band. They all came to a seminar of mine in the San Fernando Valley. We had finished about seven in the evening and everyone in the class left the hotel. I stayed behind to help my people pack up equipment and to just relax. After a while, the four members of the band came back and one of them was grinning. Looked at me and he said, our car won't start. I found out why they were grinning when they asked the next question. How about you coming out and starting it with your mind? I'd been training the group in some advanced jumping techniques. The four of them were on the cusp of being masters themselves, but it seemed they needed one more proof that this was not just talk on my part. The car battery apparently had died, and I wanted to see if those energies I'd been talking about could be brought over from another dimension to this one to reactivate the battery. Well, during the seminar, I had used the energy to start a few old watches that hadn't worked for years, but they thought that could have been coincidental. Ah, well, was my thought. Why not? I'll give it a shot. I have to admit, I didn't have a whole lot of confidence in my mind starting their battery. But why not? What have I got to lose? Worst that could happen is nothing will happen. So, getting into the car, I turned the key. Nothing. Pressed on the horn, didn't even make a bleep. Looked at the lights, nothing. Lights wouldn't go on. The battery was a goner. Well, they surrounded the car, all grinning like a bunch of Cheshire cats. I closed my eyes and went into a deep meditative state. Imagining myself in front of the doorway, I said mentally, I want to go to the universe where my twin self has the information I need to start this car. And I visualized myself opening the door and jumping over the threshold into I knew not where. I suddenly had the impression of a twin me telling me to bring over a generator and to charge the battery. It wasn't a clear impression, it just kind of a feeling. I imagined the generator. What did I imagine? I don't know what a generator looks like. I just imagined a big piece of equipment. And then I imagined the generator attached to the battery of the car I was sitting in. In my mind, I heard the generator buzzing and imagined the battery charged with energy. I was just playing, actually, kind of daydreaming. And all that took about three or four minutes. The four of them just stood around waiting. Well, I opened up my eyes, and I reached for the key again. I turned it. There's a room, and I stepped on the gas and gunned the engine. The four guys just shook their heads in wonder. One of them laughed. I must admit the most amazed person there was me. Later on in this series, I'll teach you how to bring energy over from a parallel universe to this one, although I just mentioned the exact technique. Not that you'll have many occasions to start cars with your mind, but the energy can be useful for many things. This will be after you become a quantum jumper. It'll take a bit of work, but it'll be worth it. And now for the second lesson in meditating for the jump. Find a comfortable place and I'll guide you through the novice meditation. This time, you will meet and greet your twin self. Relax, and we'll begin Short. Module 5. The Novice Jump Meditation to take you into deeper levels of meditation. Make yourself comfortable. We'll start this exercise with the three to one method. So find a comfortable position, close your eyes, take a deep breath, and while exhaling, mentally repeat and visualize the number three, three times. Take another deep breath, and while exhaling, mentally repeat and visualize the number two three times. Take another deep breath, and while exhaling, mentally repeat and visualize the number one three times. You are now at a deeper, healthier level of mind 
to reach deep, healthy levels of mind at any time. Just take an occasional deep breath. To help you to enter a deeper, a healthier level of mind, imagine that you're sitting in front of a black velvet curtain. You're very comfortable. Alongside your chair is a box with ten white plastic numbers in it. The numbers are from one to ten. When you place one of these numbers upon the black curtain, the number sticks until you remove it. You're going to take these numbers one by one and put them on the velvet curtain. First you'll put the number ten on the curtain. Then you'll remove it and replace it with the number nine and so on until you've put up and taken down the entire ten numbers. Press the number ten. Take your time. You will have plenty of time. Relax. Begin. Relax. If you've not yet reached the number one, take away whatever number you have on the curtain and replace it with the number one. Relax. You are now at a deeper, healthier level of mind. You are now and always in complete control of your state of mind. You can open your eyes. You can be fully alert anytime you wish to be. Every time you enter this relaxed state, know that you're getting better and better in every way. Whenever you enter the relaxed state, you will mentally say, every day, in every way, I'm getting better and better. When you say these words, sense yourself improving in all areas of your life. Sense yourself getting better and better. Visualize improvements in your life as you mentally repeat the words, every day, in every way, I'm getting better and better. Visualize improvements in some aspect of your life. Relax. Relax your eyes. Relax your lips your jaw, relax your head and your neck. Relax your chest, your stomach, your back. Relax your body. Relax your arms and hands. Relax your legs, your feet. You are now completely relaxed. Repeat mentally after me. Each day I improve my image of myself, my self-esteem. I am a unique human being. There's no one else on earth exactly like me. Every day I grow stronger in the realization that I can. I can think. I can Create, I can do. Relax. This is the novice state of meditation, deeper than the basic meditation. Whenever you wish to relax and take a break from the stress of the outer world, recall what you feel at this moment. Recall how you feel at this moment, how relaxed. How at ease you are. Now, with that relaxed feeling, touch your tongue to the roof of your mouth, just for a moment. That's fine. Now relax. Repeat mentally, my body rests and refreshes itself when I consciously relax. 
I'm relaxed now. My body is resting and refreshing itself, and I feel better and better. Now visualize a small hallway with a door at one end, the quantum door. I'm going to count from one to three, and at the count of three, the door will appear. One, two, three. The door has appeared. The door is closed. On the other side of that door are an infinity of places, times, events, and twin selves, twin selves of yours, counterparts, doppelgangers. On the other side of that door are parallel universes. Anything that can be imagined is on the other side of the quantum door. On the other side of the door are uncountable numbers of universes, like the sands on all the beaches on Earth, like molecules, like endless atoms blown up into universes by incredibly powerful forces. And on the other side of the door are twin selves of yours who live out their own lives in their own dimensions on their own planets, Earths, just like our own Earth, but with differences. For now, just be aware that all that exists on the other side of that door is everything, an infinity of existences, experiences, and events. In a moment, that door will open, and on the other side, you may take a quantum jump into a parallel universe, if you wish, a parallel dimension. But before you do, imagine a different you. Imagine now a you that has taken a different path, a different road than you did. Imagine a you who made different choices. Think back on a time when you made a decision that caused a turning point in your life. It might have been something small. It might have been something major. But it was a time in the past when you were confronted by a choice. What if? What if you had chosen differently? On the other side of the door is a you who did make a different choice. In a moment, I will count from one to three. At the count of three, the door will open, and you will be with a twin self, another you who made different choices. For now, simply imagine that you're meeting with his self. Your twin self may speak or may not. Your twin self may give you advice or may not. This meditation exercise is simply to meet one of those twin selves of yours, and you have vast numbers of them. When the door opens, just greet your twin self and introduce yourself. Imagine that. Visualize that. Create it. Pretend that it's happening. It may seem like it's just a daydream, but it's a daydream that you are in control of. At the count of three, the door will open, and you will step through. One, two, three. The door is open. Step through and greet your twin self. Take your time. Relax. That's fine. In the next meditation exercise, your twin self will help you, help you to set and to get your goals. In a moment, I'm going to count from one to three. At that moment, you'll open your eyes. You'll be wide awake, feeling fine and in perfect health, feeling better. 
than before. One, two, coming out slowly now. At the count of three, you'll open your eyes. You'll be wide awake, feeling fine and in perfect health, feeling better than before. Three, eyes open, wide awake, feeling fine, feeling better than before. I recommend that you go to the basic stage of meditation twice a day if you have a health problem or if you work in a stressful environment. To go to your first stage meditation once a day is very good, but twice a day is even better. It's a wonderful feeling when you're deeply relaxed. It's a very healthy state of being. Thank you. Module 6. Going Deeper with the Master Jump Reaching the Master Jumper level, you'll start your day with a jump into a parallel where a twin self has already completed the same day, and that self will be going over the things that you did that day. This accomplishes two things. One, it gets you more into the master mode of quantum jumping, And two, you will find yourself expecting things that happen during the day. By doing that, whether the outcome is as you have foreseen through your twin self or different, you'll find a new energy for every day. As you progress, you'll find that by getting with your twin self and going over the day, you'll stimulate clairvoyance and intuition. After using this mode On a daily basis for a while, you'll begin to control your day to the point where your confidence and self-esteem will grow, and you'll find yourself attracting the things you want to happen. The master jumper uses jumping to a twin self to set goals for the day, for the week, and for the month. Joe Garcia is a painter a painter, a house painter, who worked in constructive painting, construction painting, painting new homes for a major builder in the Bay Area of California. And then the recession hit in the United States, and in 2007 he found fewer and fewer jobs. He left the union after three months of no work, and a bit depressed, he sat around the house imitating a couch potato. Having been through an earlier class of mine, he was aware of the procedures of jumping. He found them interesting, but he'd never felt the need to do any of the meditations. After sitting around the house, watching television, reading, taking walks around the block, Joe figured one day, what the heck, I may as well try a quantum jump. It can't hurt. He didn't even know what he would be jumping for or to. He remembered the master meditation. And one day, alone in the house, he sat quietly and went deep into the, into the alpha level of mind. He imagined the quantum door in front of him. At that point, Joe wondered what he would find when he did make the jump. What could a twin self tell him? If the premise was correct, then he was a doctor, a lawyer, an actor, a judge, and a million other things. But how would that help him? He didn't want to be any of those things. He was a painter. So where should he go? For him, the jump was a big question mark. But he had nothing better to do. And so he mentally opened the door and he strolled through. He thought for a a, a minute that he'd switched into the daydreaming mode. Because there in front of him, he imagined that he saw a man sitting on a swing, like a child's swing. There were two of them, and the man, who turned out to be Joe's twin self, motioned to the other swing alongside. They sat that way for a moment, and Joe reported that they didn't speak, just slowly kind of swung a few feet forward and a few feet back. He just let the daydream take place, and after a bit, he thought he heard his twin self say, Paint a wall free. Now, that didn't make any sense, but he was deep into the meditation, and he asked his twin self, what do you mean free? That was it. There was nothing more. 
Joe stayed in the meditation, swinging, having his pleasant daydream for a few more minutes. And then he came up from his alpha level to mull over the words of his doppelganger. Paint a wall free. What in the world did that mean? Well, with that in, his, in the back of his mind, he went to the newspaper and he looked through the services directory of the help wanted ads. And he saw there were 10 ads from painters who were offering their services. Lots of them were out of work as well. He decided to put his own ad in, and suddenly the thought came to him. He got out a pencil and a piece of paper, and he wrote a headline, I will paint your wall free. And under it, he put the body of the ad. Painter with many years of experience will paint one wall of your room free of charge. If you like my work, I'll paint the rest of the walls for a modest price. If you don't, you've got a wall painted free. Well, <laughs> Joe told me he didn't know how many calls the other painters got. But he had so many calls that he eventually had to hire two other painters to help him with the work. To get those other painters, he went into a master meditation once again, and this time with the intention of seeing a twin self who was a good goal setter. He did, and he started setting all kinds of goals for himself. He set a goal to have three painters working for him steady, and that was for three months from the time he started. After that, he set yearly goals with his twin self. Well, needless to say, Joe no longer relied on, him, on an employer for work. He was no longer an employee. He was the employer now. He was stimulated and motivated by his counterparts. I've heard a lot of similar stories from graduates of the seminars I've presented over the years. Occasionally, someone will ask if they're really going into a parallel universe, and are they really talking to a twin self? My answer is always the same. What's the difference? If it works, it works. When it works, it works. If it's working, don't fix it. Quantum jumping stimulates, invigorates, energizes, and motivates. And that's where the power is. The next module will direct you to a master meditation, deeper than the novice meditation, and a whole lot deeper than the basic meditation. This time, you'll be guided to a twin self who's already been successful with what you want to be a success with. So then, before you do the next meditation, what is it that you want to be successful doing? If nothing comes to mind at the present, then go to your twin self who's already completed doing whatever you will be doing that day and allow your twin self to tell you about the things you did or will do that day. For now, find a quiet place where you'll be alone for, oh, 10 minutes or so, and I will help you to go and guide you through a master meditation. Relax. You may begin with the next module anytime. Module you wish. 7 The Master Jump Meditation. Well, then, make yourself comfortable. And this is not to be played, of course, in a moving vehicle. We'll start this exercise with a three to one count once again. So find a comfortable position, close your eyes, take a deep breath. And while exhaling, mentally repeat and visualize the number three, three times. That's fine. Take another deep breath. And while exhaling, Mentally repeat and visualize the number two three times. Take another deep breath. And while exhaling, mentally repeat and visualize the number one three times. Relax. You are now at a deeper, healthier level of mind. To reach a deeper, healthier level of mind at any time, just take an occasional deep breath. For now, to help you to enter a deeper, healthier level of mind, imagine that you're sitting in front of a black velvet curtain. You're very comfortable. Alongside your chair is a box with ten white plastic 
numbers in it. The numbers are from 10 to 1. When you place one of these numbers on the black velvet curtain, the number sticks until you remove it. You're going to take these numbers one by one and put them on the velvet curtain. First you'll put the number 10 on the curtain, and then you'll remove it and replace it with the number 9, and so on, until you've put up and taken down the entire 10 numbers. First the number 10. Take your time, relax, and begin. Relax. If you've not yet reached the number one, take away whatever number you have on the curtain and replace it with the number one. Fine. You are now at a deeper, healthier level of mind. You are now and always in control of your state of mind. You can open your eyes. You can be fully alert any time you wish to be. Every time you enter this relaxed state, you know that you're getting better and better in every way. Whenever you enter this relaxed state, you'll mentally say, every day in every way, I'm getting better and better. And when you say these words, sense yourself improving in all areas of your life. Sense yourself getting better and better. At this time, visualize improvements in your life as you mentally repeat those words. Every day, in every way, I'm getting better and better. And visualize improvements in some aspect of your life. Relax. Relax your eyes. Relax your lips, your jaw. Relax your head and neck. Relax your chest, your stomach your back, relax your body, relax your arms and hands, your legs, your feet. You're now completely relaxed. Repeat mentally after me. Every day I improve my image of myself, my self-esteem. I am a unique human being. There's no one else on earth exactly like me. Every day I grow stronger in the realization that I can. I can think, I can create, I can do. Relax. This is the master stage of meditation. Deeper than the basic novice and much deeper than the basic Whenever you wish to relax and take a break from the stress of the outer world, recall what you feel at this moment. Recall how you feel at this moment, how relaxed, how at ease you are. Relax. Repeat mentally, my body rests and refreshes itself when I consciously relax. I'm relaxed now. Imagine now that a great light is beginning to engulf you. Suddenly you are surrounded by a bright, fog-like light. A brilliant, bright, white fog. Imagine that this fog, this light, permeates everything. You are surrounded by this bright, white light. Allow the light to enfold you. Concentrate on the light, the bright white light. You are now in the center of a vortex of light, a great fog of light. It is almost as though you are floating in the center of a cloud, a bright white cloud that is brightened by the sunlight. 
Relax. Now visualize a small hallway with a door at one end. I'm going to count from one to three and you will leave the light. And at that count of three, you will project yourself into the hallway and a door will appear in front of you. One, two, three. A door has appeared. The door is closed. It's the quantum door. On the other side of that door are an infinity of places and times, events, and other selves, twin selves of yours. On the other side of that door are parallel universes. Anything that can be imagined is on the other side of that door. On the other side of that door are uncountable numbers of universes, like sands on all the beaches on earth like molecules, like endless atoms blown up into universes by incredibly powerful forces. And on the other side of that door are twin selves of yours who live out their own lives in their own dimensions on their own planets. Earths, just like our own Earth, but with differences. For now, just be aware that all that exists is on the other side of that door. In a moment, the door will open, and on the other side, you may take a quantum jump into a parallel universe, a parallel dimension. In a moment, I'm going to count from one to three, and at the count of three, the door will open, and you will be with a twin self, another you, a doppelganger, your counterpart, who will advise you on the problem that you are presenting. When the door opens... Just greet your twin self and introduce yourself. Imagine that. Just visualize it. Create it. It may seem as though it's just kind of a daydream, but it's a daydream that you are in control of. At the count of three, the door will open, and then you will step through. One, two, three. The door is open. Step through and greet your twin self. Take your time. If you have a problem, now is the time to ask your twin self for advice. Your twin self has already gone through the day that you're going through. Allow your twin self to tell you of the day that your twin self had. You may use your twin self's day as a blueprint for your own. Was there anything done or said that you wish you hadn't done or said? Will there be any consequences to anything that you've said or done? Now is the time to go over that material to bring it out into the open so that you will not repeat it at another time. It's good to go over your day with your twin self, especially so when you do it in the morning. It will be your morning, but your twin self's evening, as the twin self has already finished the day. At this time, go over your entire day, even if you have not yet completed the day. What will you be doing? What will you be saying? What would you like to be doing? What would you like to be saying? Imagine all the things that you'll be doing this day. Relax. In a moment, I'm going to count from one to three. At that moment, you'll open your eyes. You'll be wide awake, feeling fine and in perfect health, feeling better than before. One, two, coming out slowly now. At the count of three, you'll open your eyes, be wide awake, feeling fine and in perfect health, feeling better than before. Three, eyes open, wide awake, feeling wonderfully refreshed, in perfect health, feeling better than before. Thank you. <laughs>